All right, this one is includes. It's the same thing as the array.includes function that's available in the JavaScript standard library. You have two arguments. The first is an array of some values, in this case, a TypeScript tuple. And this, the second argument is a value that may or may not be in that array. The type is going to return true or false depending on whether or not the value is in the array, just like the name says. All right, so we have a lot of true and false uh, examples here. We'll just uh, kind of scoot past them for a second and get down here and see if we can get something together that works a little easier. So where would you start with something like this? Um, I usually start by trying to constrain mm -hmm. the generics you pass in. We want to be dealing with an array. Awesome. Um, the first one. And then my first inclination is to try to do it the way I would do it in runtime mm -hmm. by saying something like uh, U in T. But fortunately, sometimes TypeScript types have like their own <laughs> their own language. It's still JavaScript because you know we be using ternaries and all that, but it doesn't really feel like you're writing JavaScript. But um, so, so we got to get the value of the of the items in the array and compare them mm -hmm. to you. So T. I would like to iterate over it in some way. Um, extends new. Mm -hmm. Then return true, else false. Interesting. So uh, yeah, so some of these return, only some of these return false. None of them return true. Um, so let's see, false, false. So it looks like they, it, it's returning true for the ones where the first value matches, but not otherwise. So I think you have to iterate with uh, with uh, infer. Yeah, there's got to be some sort of recursion um, within this. So I'll give you a hint. So, uh, so we'll start with T just like you had. Um, uh, it's not dot, 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 sorry. Infer head and then tail. So then now we're saying like, now we have access to grab values and we can sort of check them. Um, I'll give you one more hint because this is like, a, this would, it would take forever to figure this part out. We're going to cheat just a tiny bit and use equal that comes out of the test utils that comes with the um, TypeScript challenges. It's a little bit cheating, but there's not really another way to do this. So somewhere here you have to say equal head you um, you have to do something here. Oops, not abort controller. <laughs> um, this is the true branch and this is the false branch. So um, what it is in this case is uh, this is exactly what you were just saying. Like it's a little bit squirrely because you would never say in JavaScript like does does some boolean extend true or like equals true? I mean maybe you would say equals false. Double equals false, you know. Um, but yeah, anyway, what are your thoughts from this point? Um, so if the first, this is right now, it's checking to see if the first one matches, then return true. Mm -hmm. So return true there. So I think here where it's false, even though the first one is false, we want to go through and check the rest. And so maybe we do, um, includes for the recursion, mm -hmm. pass in the tail, which is kind of all the values, but the head. Awesome. Then you. Yeah, you got it. Yeah, they all pass. Exactly. Do you have to have that extends true? What happens if I delete that? It's so oh, yeah, if you, you delete it, it, it's you can't use the ternary like you can't use the conditional type. It's not actually a ternary, I guess we should call it by what it's called. It's called the turn the conditional type. Um, yeah, that's a. Uh, unfortunate reality of the situation. What? And in that, we're also dealing with like nested ternaries, which is super ugly. Mm -hmm. What are the reasons for why TypeScript has this weird syntax sometimes? Is it trying to not collide with JavaScript syntax and has to kind of dance between the raindrops? I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure. My impression, I don't know about that. If somebody knows, feel free to tell us in the comments. My impression is that 
uh, conditional types were implemented to solve a couple really important problems. Like one of the problems is that there's no way, and there's another video on this in the TypeScript challenges, there's no way to get the return type of a function or extract the parameters from a function without ternaries because, uh, or without the conditional types because that's how you use the inferencing. Um, I'm sure it could have been done another way. Fl Flow doesn't do it quite this way, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, it's it's a little it's a little frustrating. I agree with that. Um, it could be nice if I could write an includes function that has the same syntax as a JavaScript function, and within that function, I'm only could, like, dealing with types. Do, yeah, I think like that yeah, would... operate just on the types. Yeah, I totally agree. Um, I want to show you some other ones that I found. I looked around online to see what. Um, I guess I can leave that. Oops, uh, that example in there. Maybe we like word wrap. So this one is kind of cool here. Includes number one. So this one is saying boolean extends, and then it passes in this big object. Inside of the object, we are mapping. So this thing that I have selected here is the keys, and this is the value. So we're saying, hey, uh, for i in key of, and then we're omitting t. Uh, we're omitting length from t, so we're getting all of the 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 values out. We're checking those values against u. And if it extends true, just so this is in common with the part we have up here, kind of with head, then return it. Uh, otherwise, never. So then we get a map of keys which correspond to the values at which those things exist. And then the values here, it's hard to explain, but maybe if you stare at it long enough, you'll see. Then we're seeing if Boolean extends those union of values. Does that make sense? So <laughs> you can say no, no, but anyway. I mean, this this is an example of, of yes, this type works. Yeah, but, but like it's like just wildly unreal. It's almost a shame that it does work. Uh, there's this one here as well. Uh, I guess I wrote a note to myself. This creates an object with values that are Booleans. Then you turn the object's values into a Boolean union. If the union includes true, then it will not extend false. Yeah, so same sort of deal here. Um, we're, we're grabbing this, and then we're seeing if it extends number false for each, for each value. And if so, then we return false. So this is a little more clever, but I don't. I think this is maybe less bad than this one. I think the answer you came up with is the most obvious. Um, and then, yeah, this one's the same as above, except it unwraps the objects. So... This is doing similar to what the second one that we showed did. It's actually accessing that object for those values and then checking if that extends false instead of seeing does is it a an, an record that has indexes and then false at those indexes. So, you know, fun fun times in JavaScript land. Um, criticism welcome. <laughs> anyway, that's all for that one. I think uh, luckily with a lot of these. It's so like this type has has a use, right? Like it's definitely it's good that you're able to bake it. It sucks that it's so complicated, but there's the one nice thing is there are some libraries that kind of offer these like types that you feel like kind of should be in the standard TypeScript type definitions, but aren't. And then that complexity of, of how to write this stuff is kind of you know hidden away from you. Definitely, yeah. Um, I think it's I think it's it's kind of a code smell if there's a lot of these types of types within your own code base. Totally agree. Yeah. Uh, nested, these nested conditionals uh, are usually a sign of danger. All right. Uh, let's go on to the next one. <laughs>